In the first part of this section, we saw that drops of water behave differently on different objects. We divided surfaces into two categories. For one set of surfaces, water spreads out and wets the surface, like water on a ceramic mug. Then we saw surfaces, like a cabbage leaf, where the surface does not like to be in contact with water, and so droplets can't spread. Instead, they sit on the surface as beads of water or roll away. Surfaces on which water spreads are called hydrophilic. Hydrophilic literally means loves water. In scientific terms, if a surface is hydrophilic, it means that the surface and water interact favourably, and so the water spreads out. Surfaces on which water does not spread are called hydrophobic. Hydrophobic literally means scared of water. So if a surface is hydrophobic, it means that the surface and water have unfavourable interactions. As a result, the water can't spread out and stays as a droplet. Water is made up of water molecules, which are made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Every surface will interact with water molecules in a different way, depending upon its composition. This is why some surfaces repel water and others attract water. A lot of surfaces, when we see and touch them, look flat and feel smooth. But in fact, when we zoom in on these surfaces, we almost always see that they are not flat at all and are actually made of tiny bumps and ridges. Here we see the sticky part of a post-it note zoomed in very close. We can see all the bumps of adhesive material that make the note stick. However, we often treat surfaces as being ideal to make calculations a lot easier. Ideal surfaces are perfectly flat, smooth and rigid, meaning they cannot bend. In reality, surfaces are bumpy, rough and bendy. When looking at water on surfaces, we often measure the contact angle. The contact angle measures how much a droplet of water spreads when it's in contact with a surface. The contact angle can be used as a measure of hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity of a surface. If we look at a droplet sat on a surface from side on, we can see that the top edge of the droplet forms a curve. At the point where the top edge meets the surface, we can draw a straight line from the surface so that the line just touches the edge of the droplet. This line is known as a tangent to the drop. The contact angle is the angle between the surface and the tangent that we have just drawn. When a droplet spreads on a hydrophilic surface, we can see that the contact angle is small. The more hydrophilic a surface is, the more the water will spread and the lower the contact angle will be. On the other hand, the more hydrophobic a surface is, the higher the contact angle will be, forming beads instead of spreading. We now see that there is a continuous spectrum of angles that can be formed. For a flat surface, the contact angle is dependent on the groups of molecules which are present at the surface. The interactions of the surface groups with the water molecules determine how a droplet will behave. In this section, we have discussed the different behaviours of water on surfaces and have learned the correct terminology for these surfaces. We have also seen that we can determine the hydrophilicity or phobicity of a surface by measuring the contact angle of water. There is a wide range of angles that water can form on surfaces.